hey guys welcome back to my channel today is going to be a thrift flip video i just went through my stash i pulled out a bunch of random things and i figured we would just have fun and take these items and see what i could come up with so let's get started on today's projects and i want to thank squarespace for sponsoring today's video I thrifted this piece because I love the shape of it. I loved the look of it. You could use it as a piece of decor or as a bookend. It has this hole in the middle that I am assuming was for a tea light. I always thrift succulents when I find them for a good price. I probably paid 50 cents for this at the bins and it was originally $15 at Michael's. I don't want the succulents in this container. So I'm simply just going to pull them out. That way I can reuse them on this piece. Y'all, guess what I found underneath the succulents? A stink bug. These little things just keep on making appearances in my videos. I do want to permanently attach the succulents to the wood. So I just have my drill with a drill bit about the same size as the stems of the succulent. And I'm just going to drill holes into the wood and I'm going to place them in an arrangement that I like. And once I've figured out the arrangement and have all the holes, I'm going to go back with some Gorilla Glue and add it to the stems. That way you will not be able to pull these succulents out. They will stay as is. And now it is a beautiful, unique piece of home decor using two items that I've thrifted. This is a very nice wood vase that I thrifted from Goodwill for $3.99. It originally came from West Elm and it fits this lavender plant that I have perfectly, but the dark tone is just not working for me. So I have tried this before and it didn't go well, but everybody said I needed the yellow can of Easy Off. So I'm trying it again today and we are going to see how it comes out because I want this vase to be wood, but I want it to be much, much lighter. So I've sprayed the easy off on. I let it sit there for about 20 or 30 minutes. Now I'm going to scrub it off, clean it, wash it off, and we will see how it comes out. So this is after one coat of the oven cleaner and it definitely took off a lot, but I wanna do a second coat. And I could have sanded it, but it does have a lot of texture on this piece and I was worried that sanding it would remove all that. Also, I just really wanted to try this again and see if it worked. So this is what it looks like after the second coat and this is exactly what I was going for. So if you're going to be doing the oven cleaner wood stripper experiment, I would definitely recommend using the yellow can. So my wood is now bare and it really looks great as is. This lighter tone is definitely going to go much better with my lavender than that darker wood. But I want to bring back all the beautiful wood grain in this piece. So I'm just going to apply Fusions beeswax. You just brush it on and then you let the wood soak it in for, you know, another 20 or 30 minutes and then you just wipe off all of the excess. And I love the way that this product just really brings out all the wood tones in this piece. One of the reasons I wanted to try this wood stripper method again is because I have this beautiful cabinet in my dining room, but it has been stained very dark and I think it would look so beautiful if I could bring it back to the natural wood color. So y'all leave a comment below and let me know if y'all think I should tackle this project and remove the stain on this cabinet. I thrifted this piece because it was solid wood and it had three little holes in it. I mean, it's probably for a fancy pen, but <laughs> if you watched my last video, you know what I'm going to do with this. I want to paint this piece and I'm going to be using Fusions Milk Paint in the color Gustavian White. If you have not used milk paint before, you just mix half powder with half water. And of course, I did not measure, so my paint did come out a little bit watery. Um, but if you want the perfect consistency, just make sure you actually measure. And this Gustavian White is now my new favorite favorite white. It is so pretty. It's not bright. It's not too dark. I just 
I love it. So because it is a light color and it is milk paint, it's going to take me three coats. So what I do for my first two coats is just get them on there, let it dry. And then for my third coat, I like to have a heat gun because my favorite thing about milk paint is the chippiness. And when you have a heat gun and you dry it with a heat gun, it just brings out even more texture and chippiness. So you can see all the chippiness and all of the texture, especially since the piece I started off with was a little bit shiny. The shinier your surface, the more chippy it will be. So you can sand it at this point, but since there's so much chippiness, I'm just rubbing it with my hand and getting off all those loose flakes. And then I'm gonna seal it before it can um, chip anymore. I'm gonna be using Fusions Hemp Oil. This is what I like to use as a sealer with my milk paint you just put a coat of it on you let it sit for about 20 or 30 minutes and then you just wipe off all of the excess and it gives you a nice flat finish I actually thrifted this floral as well. I love how kind of tall and spriggy they are, and I think the colors are really pretty. So I'm gonna cut off just three sprigs of this floral, and I'm actually going to hot glue them into my three little wood holes. And I just love how these tall florals look with this little chippy white piece of wood I have now. So y'all let me know what y'all think. I'm not exactly sure what this is. I think this piece is missing a lid, but I just loved the way that it looks. It kind of looks like a crock. It needs to be cleaned up a little bit. So I'm gonna clean it up, but not too much because I like a little bit of dinge on my pieces. And if y'all have not tried, the IOD traditional potch transfer is amazing. You get two sheets of black, one sheet of white, and one sheet of blue. So I think for this one, the black transfer would be perfect. So I cut it out. I kind of figured out where I want to place it on my crock. And then you remove the white backer and place place it on your piece. I also like to use painter's tape to tape my transfer down just so I know it's going to stay in place. And every transfer comes with a transfer tool and you just rub it over your image and it transfers on to your piece. If you have not tried transfers yet, you definitely should. They are so fun to use. They're almost like adult stickers. And I think this transfer in particular is great because you can take any plain pot that you find at the thrift store and add this one of these traditional pot transfers to it and it just looks absolutely amazing Whether you are just getting started or you are already an established brand, Squarespace has everything you need to power your e-commerce website and grow your business. They make it very easy to design your website with these ready to use templates and you can even narrow down your search results by clicking exactly what you need. So if you're an online store and you're a local business, it'll give you these options to work perfectly for your business. You can also preview how that design would look on a computer, a tablet, and a mobile device. So if you have been nervous about starting a website because you don't know how to design one, don't worry guys, Squarespace has got you covered. If you would like to start a free trial, head on over to squarespace.com slash Julie's Designs and Size, and you can save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain if you use code Julie's Designs and Signs. I picked up these two prints at the Goodwill bins because I really love the size of them and I actually have the perfect spot in my kitchen for them. So now I just need to make them my own style. I'm gonna be painting them using white chalk paint. So I'm just gonna put a few coats on here until I have full coverage. After my paint is dry, I'm going to distress just the wood frame on this piece. And I like to just hit the edges. I don't want it too distressed. I just want a little bit of that natural wood showing through on the frame. 
If you watch me thrift, you know that I always pick up wooden utensils and I thought this little spoon and fork combination glued onto here would be perfect for my kitchen. I'm just putting a little dab of hot glue just to hold it on. I don't wanna put too much just in case I wanna change it out later on, but I feel like the white with the little bit of distressing and the wooden wood utensils just look so perfect in my kitchen. I love how this came out, but I think the next one we are about to do is actually my favorite. I also always pick up these vintage aluminum measuring spoons. I have two sets here and I'm just going to arrange them in a way that just looks good. There's no rhyme or reason, just whatever you think it looks good. And then I'm also just going to add a little bit of hot glue to glue these to the backer. And I love how this came out so much. I'm definitely going to be looking for more frames this size to make some more kitchen artwork to sell on the website because I'm obsessed. I love how these came out so much. Y'all definitely leave a comment below and let me know what y'all think and if y'all would like to see some artwork like this up on the website. I pulled all of these different wood items out of my stash, so I'm going to take them all and do something with them today. The first thing I want to do is take these two matching candlesticks and then these two matching square bowls. The wood tone is almost exactly the same on the both of them, so I feel like they are a match made in heaven. I'm going to take my Gorilla Glue. You could also use wood glue, and I'm just going to attach these two together. Now, when using Gorilla Glue or wood glue, you definitely want to just leave it and let it dry for 24 hours, and then you'll have permanent adhesion. And then I'm just going to attach the two pieces together. I always like to do it upside down so I can make sure it is in the exact center of the piece. And that is it. These are done. Let's move on to the next wood project. I'm not going to be putting these two pieces together, but I do want to paint them both with the Gustavian white milk paint. So for the little bowl, I'd want to do a little bit more of an aged white wash. If you've been watching my channel, you've seen me do this before. So I'm just going to paint the bowl and then I'm going to take a paper towel and just wipe it back off. And that's going to give me a beautiful old looking white wash look. And then for this piece, I'm going to do the exact same process that I did earlier in the video with the little wood blocks with the three holes. I'm going to put three coats of paint on here. And then on the third coat of paint, I'm going to apply lots of heat to see if I can get some crackle and some chippy out of this piece. So this piece did not crack and chip quite as much as the other piece did, but it still has lots of texture and I love the way it looks. And so I can get a little bit of distressing. I'm just going to go ahead and sand it down with a little bit of 220 grit sandpaper. I'm just going to hit the edges, not the whole piece, because I want to keep all that beautiful texture that the milk paint gives you. Once my pieces are dry, I'm just going to seal in my paint using Fusion's Hemp Oil. I'm just going to brush it on, let it dry for about 30 minutes, and then wipe off all of the excess. I really like using this for my milk paint because it not only seals the piece and conditions the wood, but once you wipe it off, you get that nice flat finish that I love. Now I'm going to attach the whitewash bowl to this wood candlestick. Guys, always pick up wood candlesticks when you find them. You can use them as candlesticks. You can use them to make other things. You can paint them. You can leave them as is. They are just so great for so many DIY projects. And for this candlestick, I have something special to put on top of it. Look at this beautiful, large bird's nest. I think it's so pretty. It has these little picks of greenery in it. So 
you could just put it on top of here, but I actually want to glue it. So I'm going to take some hot glue and glue it on here. And I think this came out so beautiful. This might be my favorite of all these little wood projects that I did, but definitely leave me a comment below and let me know what was your favorite. I mixed up a good bit of the Gustavian white milk paint, so I wanted to use everything that I had. So I went back in my stash. I grabbed three more projects that I am going to paint with milk paint. I'm not going to videotape me doing it. I'm just going to show y'all the after. All right, guys, that is the end of today's video. I want to thank y'all for helping me clear out tons of stuff from my thrifting stash. I hope today's project inspired you and gave you some ideas for maybe some items you have previously thrifted and need to do something with. I think in today's video, my favorite projects were the pieces that I created for myself. But if you saw anything else that you loved, it will be available on my website website along with all the products and paint and everything that I used in today's video. You can shop my website juliesdesignsandsigns.com and again I want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. That is who hosts my online store and if you are interested in starting your own free trial y'all go to squarespace.com slash juliesdesignsandsigns and use my code to get 10% off and I will have a link to everything in the description below. Again, I hope y'all enjoyed today's video. I hope y'all were inspired. I hope y'all have a wonderful day and I will see y'all in the next video.